Hi, welcome back. This is part two of what I'm calling Ever Honeymoon. And this is a continuation of a message that started on 618 and talking about how there's a power move in aggressive fashion in the defense of and the deliverance of the protection of and promotion of God's very own children. And in that power move, it's continuing as we're looking at the solstice and what the moon is doing and how it is moving through the ecliptic to speak of what this season, what this time is about. So when we concluded part one, we were looking at how our bodies uh, reveal the ubiquitous beauty woven into all DNA by the hand of Yah who made all creation and made it to be beautiful. And it's in mathematical um, a precision and in this golden mean ratio of 618 1.618 that is pretty neat and um, please read again Psalm 19 the message version because it covers everything we're talking about the Maseroth Sun Moon and stars the strawberries the how we are to look at the word above all else and it's a conclusion and through line of his love so we're continuing the theme of the ubiquity of his wisdom woven into creation, the beautiful way he sees us and has made us. And so when we keep that in mind, our own work of our hands is also considered beautiful when we follow Father God's design and his heart, because even artists like Renoir and Leonardo da, uh, da Vinci and um, Van Gogh, their works when some of them are studied, they followed the golden mean, this, uh, this divine ratio, and uh, it, it was how they laid out their paintings and their artwork. And so the most compelling renowned works followed this 618, and it was compelling and beautiful to human sight. Well, that's also a manifestation of how God made you and me and so we flowing in that will also make beautiful things okay so let's talk about the the solstice it is part of um the cosmic clock the Maseroth, the sun moon and stars speaking about the prophetic language of the messiah promised aforetime then walked on earth into the canon of scripture and into our hearts for those who have accepted so the cosmic clock is talking about how we will have this moon that is speaking to the church and what the moon is doing right now is, is so cool to me because on the solstice the moon is moving between Antares to the teapot of Sagittarius these are the constellations on the Maseroth not the zodiac so different not the same uh, so this is remarkable to me because that movement from Scorpius to Sagittarius the the heart of the sting of death to uh, a sweet time uh, having tea <laughs> in the constellation of Sagittarius um, which speaks of the God's precision in attacking death with love. It's glorious. But okay, so after observing Shavuot or Pentecost, we see this move that the exciting uh, promise of harvest comes for those who are consecrated, the sun and king planet Jupiter being in the constellation of Taurus, speaking of the power of, of, of Yah and his son moving for us by the Holy Spirit in us to bring to bear and a breaking forth into the things that have been long awaited for. This is the move the power move that has happened and that we're now going to be seeing a shift into this should we agree by heavenly pronouncement and walking in alignment and intimacy and humility we shall see these very promises come to pass so um, the sun and, and Jupiter are uh, in the constellation of Taurus and the sun is at the highest point in the northern hemisphere, most north, and that is what the solstice is, the longest day on the northern hemisphere. So we're going to see a warming up. Now, as we move from the solstice on 620 and we go to 621, the moon is going to be full on 621 into the harvest. Uh, speaking of harvest, but it's the strawberry moon, the honeymoon moon. Speaking of the sweetness that is coming, that is ours, kissed of heaven and designated for us. So this is a love story for sure. A love story that we can find sweetness and, and, and delight in as long as we keep our gaze up on the Holy One, the one true one, the living word and not on us, we're going to be great. So 
Huh, what else am I going to share? So, okay, so we're going back to the, the golden mean, which is an, is, is in everything, everything that has been made. So the caution here is that when we take our eyes off of what's up there and all that God has done and we shift focus on accident or because we get prideful, we can sabotage the fulfillment of these promises because our job is to stay in harmony. That's what the invitation is, 618, this, this golden divine um, ratio and mean uh, stay in harmony and when we do and we stay in this place of humility and we don't try to alter or tamper God's time or his created wondrous works by our own prejudice or hubris or thinking we can do much better than him we will sabotage so much because of our impatience and rebellion against our maker so Guard your hearts, be mindful, be careful. We don't accidentally drift there. I mean, sometimes I have to check myself. Oops, was that a little bit of pride? I'm so sorry, Father. And let it go and let him, you know, clean things up. You know, stay vigilant about your heart. Okay, so that's why it's so humbling for me to see the moon, which represents God's people and the messages that we need to receive, to be passing the heart of the sting of death, the, the binary star, the fiery heart of the scorpion, and leaving the sting of death and the duplicity we have experienced and are passing by now by the work of great grace. And we're given a path away from God's rejection, His judgment, hellfire judgment, because of Christ's redemptive sacrifice. So we get to live the path of life, moving now into the teapot of Sagittarius, the constellation, and it, the moon becoming the full strawberry honeymoon moon. It's so sweet. It's reminding us that in this time, we are to enter in to the promises that have been prepared by us, the lands kissed by him, the dew of heaven that has prepared these lands for us. And these are going to be ours as long as we stay in intimacy. Let him fight the battles and the giants that we need to, to get help in doing. And so when we do it this way and regard him highest with Christ King as the key to bring heaven to earth and allow us to then enter into the heavenlies to sit there and have tea with him to be in communion to stay humble to hear the strategies to make sure our hearts are pure and one with him because it's gorgeous because the ever eternal invitation is always be with me my children be with me sit with me sup with me dine with me this is what i've always wanted a father who has so many children around his banquet table this is a part of our preparation for that kingdom come sit and let's have tea teapot of sagittarius let me conquer those death things by my love the arrows that are so specific it'll take care of those dark ones so it was also very interesting. King Planet Jupiter this month is getting brighter and brighter and brighter, and it's going to outshine most all of the stars. What does that say? That King Jesus is the one to keep our eyes on always. He is the bright and morning star. He will outshine everyone and everything, rightly so, because he is the way of life, and he has conquered death for us. And him being uh, Jupiter being in Taurus, it's like reminding us he is the final answer, the final blow to kill death itself. And so this is the Abrahamic covenant that reminded of that God fulfills all his promises and he does this generation upon generation. It only gets better and better with him. Oh, and Jupiter is also at 1.8 magnitude. We're seeing a Lahayim 18.18 coming back. It's life, it's life, it's life. And it's also a play on this golden mean ratio that we're visiting right now with the message released on 618. Isn't this kind of neat? And my little notes are falling all over the place because I have so many. Forgive me. So all of this is, is an underscore, a reminder to be one with him, to receive the eternal promises of newness that only comes with King Jesus. And we should be able to see King Planet with our naked eye this month of June as we are experiencing the strawberry honeymoon moon. So I need to stop here again because we are almost at 10 minutes and we're going to explore what this new moon is saying and what and why to not say why in July. I'm Jane, Jane, uh, <laughs> I'm Jane Justice Park and I'm all tongue-tied. I'll see you in part three. Bye. <laughs>